welcome to worship here at First Christian Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. It is a joy to welcome you to our YouTube channel to view this weekly worship that we provide. And also I hope that you'll pair it with the worship bulletin that you either got in the mail or that comes to you via email. We invite you to continue following us on our website at fcclincoln.org and do like us on our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram. In addition to our video worship, we have an audio sermon series available as well. The number is in the messenger or you can contact the church office if you know someone that might prefer to listen to the sermon on the phone. And we still are offering in-person worship on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. We just ask everyone attending to mask and physically distance. So we hope in one of these ways that you are able to connect with one another and with God. Today we are joined by our music director, Mark Miller, by our videographer, Kelly Terrell, and Elder Wayne Duncan will be bringing us our scripture lesson for today. Our reading today is from the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name of the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The sins are reading. Thank you, Wayne. In these days of masking and physical distancing, one of the most challenging components, I think, is that human desire we have to encounter one another face to face. It's in that personal encounter that we exchange conversations and that we get a sense of what's happening not only for ourselves, but for the other person. There's just something really challenging about seeing somebody from, you know, the nose up. It makes it difficult to have the kind of conversations most of us are used to having in the past. And then there's not to mention the whole challenge of sometimes hearing one another while masked. We just have this desire to encounter one another face to face. When I lived in the Czech Republic and was struggling to learn Czech, I always dreaded it when I had to make a phone call to somebody that I knew would have to be in check. I would much rather do it face to face. There was something about being in the proximity with the other person and usually their very gracious attempts to help me, the foreigner, understand 
that there was something in that encounter, even though I don't see very well, that I could still read their body language. I could still get a sense from the inflection of their voice and they from mine. So they could tell when they maybe needed to explain something or use a different word in Czech, one that I knew and understood. There was that desire to encounter one another face to face. Our passage from Exodus is no exception to that. In fact, Moses approaches God with great boldness and basically says to God, I want to see you face to face. Now you have to consider what a, a gutsy uh, request this is because earlier in Exodus, the people of God come to Moses after Moses has brought them the Ten Commandments and says to Moses, only you talk to us. We do not want God to talk to us because if God talks to us, if we see God, we will die. So for Moses to make this request to see God face to face is requires a great deal of chutzpah on his part. Professor Kiersey Sterna, a professor at Lutheran Theological Seminary in Pennsylvania, writes in her Theological Reflections for Lectionary Homiletics that she thinks that Moses is a great example of the ultimate gutsy prayer. That really the story is about Moses and his willingness to come fully before God, to share fully of himself. Moses shows a perseverance that is tenacious, and he shows a boldness in the request that he makes that might make us shudder just a little bit. Moses does not hesitate to challenge God and even to argue with God. Their relationship is so intimate. And in this passage, we have that powerful dynamic of God's glory and otherness and God's intimacy and desire to be connected to God's creation. In this encounter with Moses, we see this tension clearly as both God and Moses seek an intimacy with one another, to see one another face to face, but because of God's glory and greatness, there are limitations around that, and God is ever faithful to protect Moses in whatever way is needed. Moses boldly comes before God and makes the request, and God is able to respond. In his book, Prayer, The Heart's True Home, well-known spiritual author Richard Foster invites us to consider the different styles and types of prayer, and he begins his book with what he calls beginning or simple prayer. And by that, what Foster means is we have an invitation to come fully before God and to share openly of who we are in our day-to-day -day lives. Foster invites us, much as Moses did, to come fully before God, to share the things happening in our hearts, in our minds, to share even the most mundane things in our daily lives, but in that way to deepen our intimacy with God by sharing fully of ourselves. It is in this process of beginning or simple prayer that we find the foundation for the intimate relationship we are invited to have with God. The power of Moses' story is that Moses sets an example for us and invites us into a more intimate, more life-giving relationship with God. We are invited to come fully as we are with all our feelings, our experiences, with our angers and frustrations, with our joys and sorrows, and to share them intimately with God as we would with a trusted friend. And we know that it is in that process that God shares God's intimacy with us in the desire to know us fully and to empower us to know ourselves. Moses provides a great example for us in this story, and we too, I think, are invited to ultimately be gutsy prayers, to share fully of ourselves, especially in these challenging times, especially when we are challenged by our desire to encounter one another face to face. 
And while our face-to-face -face encounters with one another as human beings are incredibly challenged right now, we are reminded that our face-to-face -face encounters with God are ever wider and more open to us. May we be, have the chutzpah of Moses and may we claim the title of ultimate, ultimate gutsy prayers. Amen. <laughs>